Hello, everybody, and welcome back once again. We're at the Voice Peering Forum, June 2008, in San Francisco. I'm Hunter Newby, and I'm joined by Mr. Pankaj Shroff, who is the Chief Applications Architect at Sonus Networks. Pankaj, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Please do tell us a little bit about Sonus Networks. Sonus is a, is a large uh, equipment manufacturer for telecommunications infrastructure. And Sonus has a full portfolio of uh, equipment uh, from access to applications. Um, and uh, we play in the world's biggest markets. Mm. Um, we have six out of the top ten carriers as our, uh, as our customers. And we, uh, we run some of the world's largest IP voice networks. Um, um, uh, or rather our equipment runs some of the world's la largest IP voice networks. For example, we carry um, about 12 billion minutes on wireless networks within North America itself mm -hmm. per month um, and, um, and over 30 billion minutes a month uh, worldwide. So and, uh, that's really impressive, uh, you know, 6 out of 10 yep. for Sonus. How old is Sonus? Company Sonus one? is 10 years old and uh, we are a public company. Nice. So, in terms of application development, obviously you're the chief applications architect. So what are some of the critical applications that you have today? And also what do you see being developed here in the near future? Absolutely. So my role at Sonus as a, as a chief uh, applications architect is to focus on essentially trying to f uh, give a strategy to the applications program at Sonus mm -hmm. and also to the platform that lies underneath, which is IMX. Mm. Uh, our, at IMX, on IM, uh, our application strategy focuses around IMX and um, it is a application development platform and at the same time it's a service execution platform. Mm -hmm. And it really provides uh, carriers an opportunity to kind of bring the Google Labs model mm -hmm. to, the, uh, to the carrier environment, if you will, and, and create applications rapidly and, um, and deploy them uh, and try them out in smaller sets or uh, towards targeted towards smaller sets of audiences and then depending on the hit or success ratio of applications they can then ramp it up using the exact same equipment or, or infrastructure. Wow. So that's the key, key benefit of, Son uh, of Sonus's IMX platform. It's the flexibility for them to be able to create and deploy. It's the flexibility, quickly. it's the scalability, and right. it's the high availability that, you know, that we carry with our carrier DNA, if you will. So what, what yeah. goes into that, specifically from an application's point? I mean, what do you need to give them as a starting point to have them have the ability to create on top of That's it. a great question. So in order to really leverage this rapid application mindset, the Google Labs for, uh, paradigm, like I said, right. uh, we have to be able to uh, rely on developers. So there's about three to four million Java developers, for example, out there, right. right? And for a developer that's not a telecom expert to be able to create a service that's immediately scalable right. and fault tolerant, the idea is in the IMX, uh, the idea is to, to expose the capabilities of that kind of infrastructure using APIs that are immediately familiar to those types of developers. Hmm. And so what we've done is we've taken the SIP servlet API, which is a standard space API, and we've implemented that on our platform so that uh, Java developers or non, you know, folks that are not telco experts can develop uh, applications or services using a servlet programming model which is immediately f familiar to them mm. and and we've then extended those APIs and exposed for example a fault tolerance or high availability API or a billing information API mm. or a subscribers profile API uh, in the same vein as the SIP servlet API so it's again very familiar to them right. uh, and they don't have to learn uh, the 30, right. 20, 30, 50 years of uh, research that has gone behind high availability. So you let them come at it from their perspective and you insulate them from all the other stuff. Absolutely. We provide an abstraction right. layer to them so that they can create or innovate at the speed that they're used to innovating right. and then let the infrastructure or the application platform, which is the IMX, take care of high availability and failover and redundancy right. and performance. Um, right, so those are the key elements that yeah. you give them that are essentially the, the fundamental building blocks. Absolutely. So there they are and then they can play the level above that. Exactly, and, and we don't just say Java, we provide them multiple layers of abstraction at that point and we provide, so for example, we support CCXML and mm -hmm. we are implementing web services in our platforms 
so that they can use languages that they're already comfortable with. Right. Do you ever incorporate any of the things that the developers do into your core package? Absolutely. So what, what we've done is, so there's a couple of different models there. Uh, one is when we develop custom applications for our carrier partners or our customers, um, we uh, tend to retain IPR. Uh, depending on the, the way the deal is structured, we are willing to share IPR or have the customer completely own the IPR. Mm -hmm. And in cases where we do own the IPR, uh, those types of services are bundled inside the application and then offered up as you know, shrink wrap building blocks. For the purposes of the people watching this one day, um, explain what IPR is. Okay, uh, IPR is just intellectual property rights. Right. So that's, that's all I meant. There's a lot of acronyms yeah. in this business. Absolutely. And yeah. IP means a lot of things to people. I just want to be very clear. Very good, yeah. very good question. Intellectual yeah. property right. rights. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Um, I've heard some stories in the past about the hardware world, particularly voice, um, and sort of asterisks, so the asterisk phenomenon, yes. specifically in voice over IP. Um, and if I could draw a parallel or an analogy to uh, Linux and, you know, the other old server um, models and then open source. And then you, we obviously saw 